Hey everyone, Dana from Big Sky Mo here. Here, this video today is a follow up from the video we did in person last year with one of our horses, illustrating the different cinch type benefits depending on your saddle rigging position. Um, and saddle rigging position being, again, as it is what it sounds, where your saddle is rigged as far as that rigging ring goes. Um, there are different types of rigging as well. We're not gonna get into the different types today. That is a factor as well, but we're mainly going to focus on where the rigging ring is um, in relation to your saddle and how that could help you determine what type of cinch might be best. Um, one of the most common questions we get is, what is better, a straight cinch or a roper cinch? And it's just, it's a little more complicated than that. It totally, it has to do with your horse shape, it has to do with your rigging position, um, and type and so there are there are multiple factors there and hopefully we'll be able to clear some misconceptions today What I'm going to do today is this little thing here is going to represent our cinch buckle And I'm just going to drop this into full rigging position oh, There we go. Most of the cinches we tie are somewhere between seven eighths and three quarters um, It just totally depends on the saddle maker and where they put it. We do tie a, quite a few cinches for full rig saddles as well. A lot of roping saddles are full rigged. So um, yeah, different cinch styles work differently with different rigging positions as well as different horse shapes. So what we're gonna start off with, again, we're gonna start off with a cinch ring in full rig position. I'm gonna draw a straight cinch shape right there. What we're looking for here with cinch fit is that we don't have the leading edge of the cinch rubbing in this really sensitive area. And and right here as well, that part of the horse has pretty thin skin. So when we have cords rubbing right up here um, and stuff like that, and when there's too much friction and heat can't escape, that's when storing happens. And that doesn't matter if you have a molar cinch, neoprene cinch, cotton cinch, it, when there's friction, heat buildup, and pressure where there is not supposed to be pressure, that is a recipe for soaring. So as far as straight cinches go, for every two cords of eight ply that we use, that's gonna add usually about a, a half an inch of wood. So we can go anywhere from a 13 strand to a 15 strand to a 17, 19, 21, 23. The further forward your rigging position is, the less room you have for a cinch. So on a pony cinch, we might do like a 13 strand. Ponies don't have real big armpits. We'd have to go with a smaller number of cords. Uh, we might even go with an 11 strand cinch. Um, when, when we're talking about for a regular size horse, if we're talking about a full rig saddle, we might go with something like a 15 or a 17 strand cinch. It just totally, again, depends on how much room is in that area. Um, like I said before, most of the saddles we tie are somewhere between seven eighths and three quarters. So most of the straight cinches we make are 17 or 19 strands, but we can adjust that depending on what your um, situation is with your horse shape and rigging size. The other thing we can change is the buckle size. The further forward, again, this rigging is, the less room we have. So we might have to go with a smaller buckle if it's a horse that has super, super springy ribs and already tends to push buckles forward. We want everything to stay flat and even, and we don't want rubbing and a lot of fiction, friction. So I'm gonna raise some of that. One thing I have seen more of lately is, again, everybody thinks wider is better. The wider the cinch is, the more comfortable it's gonna be for the horse. And that's true to a degree, but if we have pressure where there is not supposed to be pressure, that will create problems. So hopefully this next cinch will illustrate some of why a full flare roper, on all of our ropers, we have a couple weaves up by the buckles and then it flares out. Again, pardon my bad drawing skills, but you can see how those leading strands right there are pretty close to the armpit. That full flare roper could have some rubbing issues because it is sitting pretty far forward. Um, the way around that would be, oops, I lost my ring. Try this again. Thank you for your patience. I'm not great on <laughs> drawing on here quite yet. Uh, on a partial flare roper, we can actually change where the flare of the cinch happens. So this is, we can, we can keep this part here straight and then we can add an extra weave right here to change where the flaring is gonna happen. And if you can see in this area, we have more room here 
than we did with the full flared roper. So just by pulling that part in and changing where the flaring happens, that is already going to give the horse more room in the armpit area, which is really important. We do not want to restrict movement. Now let's draw a... We're going to change where this ring is. I'm going to move this back a little bit closer to the position where we where the buckle is sitting for most of our customers. And actually, this is a good time to illustrate why we don't want buckles too low. You can see in this elbow area, if we have a buckle sitting low, how that can run in um, again to the armpit and the elbow not going to be comfortable. So we want to make sure that our buckle is always sitting free and clear of that. This is somewhere between seven eighths and three quarters. There we go. Okay. So straight cinch. This is where we can get away with a little bit wider straight cinch, like a 19 strand, maybe even a 21 strand. The further back we go with the rigging position, the more room we have. A 21, 23, 25 strand, those are mostly going to work straight cinch wise with something like 5 eighths or center far, maybe 3 quarter depending on the horse shape. I have seen 25 strand straight cinches lately that folks are putting on full and seven ace rig saddles and that is that is really wide top to bottom if we're talking about something that's seven or eight inches wide they do actually require special buckles anyways but with a super wide straight cinch and really wide buckles you can imagine if this buckle was bigger and further forward you could see how that would really really interfere with the horse movement so those really really wide straight cinches are not designed to go on rigging that is really far forward. Um, but again, for our purpose, a 17 or a 19 strand cinch uh, with this type of rigging would be no problem. We have plenty of room in here and that's a good thing. That is what we're looking for. We're looking for clearance in this elbow area. So now we'll draw both of our other types. We have, we'll have, oops, yeah, our full flare roper. Again, it's pinched in closer up toward the buckle and then it flares out. Plenty of room in here. And what I'm going to do this time is draw a full flare roper. Or I'm sorry, not a full flare roper. Um, a partial flare roper with this highlighter. Because I do get people asking, well, why would I want a full flare roper versus a partial flare roper? What is the difference? Um, and with the full flare ropers, when the flare is happening higher up, that does give you more surface area and grip. Uh, we noticed that was a really helpful thing on really, really chubby horses or even slab-sided horses where you get a lot of um, saddle slipping issues. We've noticed that the full flare ropers are helpful because you have more grip higher up. Um, but again, the big important thing to keep in mind is that do you have enough room and clearance in that elbow and armpit area? That is the number one thing we are looking at as far as cinch fit goes because when again that leading edge rubs when there's friction when there's extra pressure that is going to lead to soaring and that is a problem so if uh, as always if you guys have any questions on cinch fit or you're not sure what type you need and um, you just need some guidance we are always always happy to help with that if you're able to send you know a side shot similar to this with the the fender tucked back um, that'll help us um, kind of help you decide what type might be best for you and so hopefully has everybody has hopeful hope everybody has a great rest of the day um and again as always if we can answer any questions don't hesitate to shoot us a message and we'll chat with you guys soon